And we're good. Hey, Mark. Hey. How are you? I'm excited to be here. I'm ready to roll. Ready to rock and roll? Yeah. We get to talk about ex something extremely exciting today. And that is Realtors and tax benefits and tax advantages, uh, you know, when they're, when they're filing their, their, their 2020 taxes. Uh, but before we get into that, maybe we can just take a, you know, a brief couple of minutes and uh, Mark, if you want to just introduce yourself and who you are, your longtime friend of lab code agents been on before and, and without a doubt in one of the coolest freaking studios of all time. Um, <laughs> I don't know if, if you're getting money from Paramount or 20th Century Fox or, or what's going on. Look at this. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I don't know if Steven Spielberg is there or what, but you you got a lot going on there, and it's it's super cool. Um, so if, if you just want to take maybe a couple minutes and just tell everybody about yourself and, and your background, that would that would be greatly greatly helpful for all of us. Well, you bet. And I'm I'm making a frantic list here because I want to have a clean new note here just for this group here today. Why is that weird X there? Does that go away? Okay. Well, everybody, this is going to be one of your most profitable podcasts, webinar, recordings, videos of the year, right here in December, year-end tax strategies. So important, so freaking important. And I'm going to make it as entertaining as I can, fun. We're going to see who can make, you know, come up with the best Christmas movie quotes as we go through this. But my name is Mark Kohler. I'm a CPA attorney, senior partner in accounting firm, law firm best-selling author, no other author has written more books and sold more books on small business tax strategies uh, than me. Uh, there's some other tax books out there, but there, some of them are uh, institutional. There's no guy, no gal that's out there more than me. I'm grateful for that. No more, no one has more YouTube followers, subscribers, uh, social media followers. So I'm trying to make this main street small business stuff sexy, keep it exciting and fun. I got an amazing team behind me of lawyers and accountants and our trust company. And that's me. And that's awesome. That's it. So that's awesome. So make it work. So to take this giant brain of yours and to, you know, get the knowledge in front of, you know, we, we, we all know realtors and a lot of them, have this thing called ADHD, maybe just a little bit, um, right? And I so, <laughs> right? And so in a, in a very Adderall friendly environment, uh, you know, what, what are some of the things that agents need to be doing right now uh, to really obtain the best results when they file their 2020 taxes? Okay, we are going to do our top 10 tax strategies, drum roll, for you older folks that are David Letterman fans, that's right. I he would do it. his top 10 every night. We are going to do it here with you. I'm going to give you the top 10, and then we're going to go through them as quick as we can in one hour or less. I've got YouTube videos on all of these topics that are usually as uh, little bite-sized videos on the topic so that you can uh, get your feel for it. I have a membership uh, site, my markjkohler.com where I've got a video library, tax and legal strategies, books, workbooks, very, very affordable. I've got Christmas gifts that just went live today for the entrepreneur in your life. And our Cyber Monday special webpage is still up, um, but I have not sent out any links since Monday morning, but I think it goes dormant tonight at midnight. So I'll let you guys know about that. So if you like any of these things we're talking about, you can study up on them a little bit with a uh, a cheap little Cyber Monday special, get a bunch of videos and, and, on, and online support. All right, here we go. Here's the top 10, no particular order. And I'm gonna rely on you for some Q and A. So this will be good. Got it. Uh, oh, am I, okay. All right, self-employment tax is number one. That is the number one killer of brand new realtors and even successful realtors with a bad accountant. Are you an S corp? What should your payroll be? What do I have to do now between early December and mid January? Because there's things you have to do or you're gonna miss out. So self-employment tax. Number two, real estate. Why are my realtors buying rentals and are they buying rentals right now? 
What do we see coming down the pipe in the real estate industry with the mountain of foreclosures that are behind dams right now yeah. and evictions that are being held back? There's going to be a buyer's market this year for investment property. And are you ready for that? And it's a huge tax strategy. I only mention it briefly because there's nothing really you can do in the last three weeks of the year, but you need to keep, keep your eyes open. We're going to maximize on our dining, home office. I'll say a few words about all these. Auto, hoo, 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 hoo. some good things you can do right before the end of the year with auto if you're interested. Travel, I want your Christmas uh, holiday travel to be a write-off this year. We're going to talk about your board of advisors or board of directors. Um, do you need to put any family members on payroll? Are you going to pay your spouse before year end or your kids, teenagers, over 18, under age 18? Family pay. Huge topic. A lot of people do it wrong or not at all. Health insurance. Are you going to fund a health savings account? Do a health reimbursement arrangement? Flexible spending account? What are you doing with your health care write-offs before year end? And your retirement account contribution. Are you doing a Roth conversion before December 31st? That's the deadline. Are you setting up a solo 401k? Are you doing anything with an IRA, a Roth, 401k, or a SEP? And it's decision time. This is something you talked about in April. You're going to be jacked up if you don't deal with it now. And number 10, are you writing off all those little fun holiday purchases, electronics, uh, home, uh, office supplies, equipment, prepaying for anything you're going to buy in January? Let's get the write off now because who knows what the freak's going to happen with Biden and his administration next year and the tax bill that could come for some of you high earners. Those are our top 10. I love it. Okay, so which one do you want to start with? I'll let you choose. Oh, let's go at the top. Okay. Now I've got this um, uh, uh, whiteboard here that I'm going to use. And here you go. Here's a pen. Thank you. All right. <laughs> now what Mark Kohler does, this is Mark Kohler, Mark Kohler Doctrine 101. We are doing short-term, long-term, the trifecta. Now, I've got to get this on the table because we're going to be talking about it with almost every one of these strategies. Yeah. Um, so if you're a realtor, broker, mortgage officer, loan officer, and you're a sole proprietor, you got a 1099 coming your way. Yeah. Everybody starts out as a sole proprietorship. You might set up an LLC. They do not save taxes, people. You're going to pay self-employment tax of 15.3% on everything you make of profit in 2020. Then you're going to pay your state and federal. So this is going to kick your can. 15% on your net profit plus state plus federal. Not pretty. That could be 50 to 60% of your income. So, wow. yeah, ugly. The number one strategy. Can I repeat this enough? The number one tax strategy for realtors and brokers across the country, I've been doing this 20 years, I can't count how many times I've written, talk, podcast, videoed about this, is the S is in small corporation. Don't let your accountant talk you out of it. It is the most important strategy I even teach to CPAs around the country. Every dentist, doctor, lawyer, anesthesiologist, dentist, electrician, plumber, contractor, fix and flipper, realtor, broker, they're all S corps. When you're making more than 50 grand a year net or more, sometimes as low as 40 grand, it's costing you to not be an S corp. Now you can take your LLC and tax it as an S corp. Some of you are like, oh, well, I, my LLC is taxed as an S corp. Then you're an S corp. Don't ever hit, let me hear you say, I'm an LLC. No, once you make your S election, you're an S corp. And every accountant and strategist and insurance agent and lawyer that you work with is going to get confused and frustrated if you start saying you're an LLC. You're not. Once you make an S election, you changed. You morphed into an S corp, which means you have to take payroll. And that's going to save you money. So you're going to take a payroll. If you're going to make a hundred grand, let's say you make a hundred grand this year, what's your payroll supposed to be? It's got to be filed and in a W-2 in the mail by mid-January. That's five weeks away. 
you're going to jack this up if you don't get with the right payroll service or take too little or too much. I've got a Kohler payroll matrix. It's on my website. It's in my books. You're going to study up on this. You're going to get your crap together. In an example of a hundred grand, that's your draw. That's how much you took. I'm good with it. Fine. I'm not saying you got to cut yourself a paycheck. You're going to do a 941 payroll report. And I'm going to take 40 grand as payroll and 60 grand as pass-through K-1 income, which gets a 20% deduction on top of that. And you don't pay any FICA, the F word, FICA. We hate that, right, Jeff? FICA. Oh. So we're going to save 15.3%. I just saved $9,000 doing this. And I know some of you in California are going, well, Mark and S Corp or LLC cost me $800. And I don't want to do a tax return and I don't want to do payroll. You're right. This strategy is going to cost you two grand. Okay, but let's just do the math. Spend two grand, save nine. No. That works. I, I, yeah, it's hard math. Let me just, yeah. Let me, yeah. Say it, spend two, save nine. And the more money you make, the more you save. Let me get you something real nice for Christmas, Clark. Put that on the list, baby. There we go. <laughs> okay. Jeff, any questions on that? Thoughts, comments? Um, here, here's my, my number one question. I, and by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, a title and escrow guy. So I, I work with realtors all the time. And the number one thing I hear from them is, oh, I'm setting up an LLC, setting up an LLC, setting up an LLC. Why S Corp over LLC? Because LLCs don't save taxes. That's it. You can't do this with an LLC. Yeah. Oh, but my LLC's taxed as an S Corp. Then you have an S Corp. That's an S Corp, correct. That's an S Corp. So if someone says... In the same sentence, they go, set up an LLC and do your S election. Fine. Oh, well, is it cheaper to set up an LLC with an S election? Nope. It's cheaper for me to set up you as an Inc., a professional corp, Mark J. Kohler PC. All my realtors that do it right from the very beginning, they're an Inc. They're a PC. They're a limited. They're a company. They're not an LLC. I clean up hundreds of LLCs every year where people are like, well, I just thought I was supposed to get an LLC. Did you get that advice from an accountant or a lawyer? No, my broker or friend told me. Maybe you're yeah. getting advice from the wrong person. Yeah. If I'm going to go buy a property, do I self-list on Zillow? No, because I know realtors are worth what I pay them. Did you hear that? Yes. I never, ever have listed on Zillow. Every house I've ever sold, I hired a realtor. Is that what you do? Or do you go to TurboTax and LegalZoom? Oh, but you're smarter. Yeah. Take some of your own advice, people. There you go. Woo! I love Fired it. up. This rock star is good vintage. There we go. Fire back some more of that. Let's go to number two, my friend. Okay. Number two is the right side. This is your operations over here. You're going to be yep. an S Corp sooner than later, or an LLC taxed as an S Corp. I'm good with that. Down here is your family trust. This is your family trust. And over on this side of the wall are all your assets. And what's the number one asset realtors, brokers, and contractors retire on? Rental property. Mm -hmm. Oh, I encourage all my realtors to buy one rental a year or a part of a rental. Team up with some party, some family, friends, team members and buy a rental every year. Oh, but Mark, you don't know what rentals cost in Southern California. Uh, no, I do. I lived in Orange County for eight years and I got sick of paying taxes. So I moved out. Now I have a rental in Orange County and I go back and visit when I want, but I don't pay taxes in California. I've been there, done that people. Oh, I live in the Bay area. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you've got a million dollar meth lab rental. That's about what a meth lab it costs in you know, Oakland million dollar. No, you buy rentals around the country. You invest where grandma lives. I bought a rental nine years ago next to my mother-in-law in Idaho. Not because I like to go to Idaho. It's because every time I visited mom and mother-in-law, I got a tax write-off. Buy rentals where you travel. Get a referral fee. Network of the property manager and a realtor in an area where you can cash flow and buy quality rentals. You get 100% deduction from all depreciation against your other income because you are a real estate professional. That is the strategy. You buy rentals that cash flow, that produce losses on paper. You know this people, you know it. You tell, you sell to clients all the time. You're a real estate professional. Why aren't you buying a rental once in a while? Well, I don't even own my own house. 
When I lived in Orange County for eight years, half of that time I rented because it was cheaper to rent. And I took my money and bought rentals in Arizona and Utah that cash flowed that paid my rent for my place in Orange County. You don't have to buy your house all the time, people. You, yeah. oh, you, 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 oh yeah, you want to go down and put two or 300 grand down and get a jumbo loan so you can get a condo in Orange County or San Diego and then go try to buy rentals? No. Sometimes renting yourself is cheaper and you take your capital and go buy cash flowing rentals that produce losses that get you a refund so you can go buy more rentals and you start making money. Like, oh, who's our best example of a real estate professional that only paid $800 in tax last year? Oh yeah, our crazy Twitter President Trump. Great real estate investor, little nutty on the side. We all know that. I'm not gonna get political. But I'm saying the reason why he only paid $800 in tax is because he got write-offs from all of his real estate investments against his apprentice income. Yeah. You can do the same thing, people. It, the same strategy is there. I analyzed Joe Biden's tax return last year as well when they were in their race, or this year. Joe Biden has a rental property on his tax return. What are we doing? That's number two strategy buy rental real estate and use the real estate professional classification. Okay. Jeff, any questions on that? Let's roll. Okay. I've number three. To bring up. Let's go. Okay. Good. And if, and I don't know if you're taking live chat questions, if you want to save up. A question, okay. If you want to save up questions at, and do them on each topic or at the end, whatever you do, I'm all yours. Got okay. it. Dining. Dining is one of the biggest write-offs realtors miss all the time. Dining should be one of your biggest line items. You're out, you're showing client properties. You should, you're buying them lunch. You're buying yourself lunch. You write down 100% of all your dining. The accountant cuts it in half. That includes the bar tab, the tip, everything. Whenever you go out to eat, I know you. You're talking real estate. You are. My daughter is a realtor in Orange County. I love her. That was her calling me just a minute ago on my, at my Apple Watch here. She's awesome. She's in real, in, I won't even say what broker she's with or who she's, her team members are, but she's right there with you. I love realtors. You're great at dinner parties. You always talk about real estate when you're out. That's a deduction, people. Write off all your dining. You can even write off dining by yourself if you're traveling outside of a normal commute. So when my daughter, Sydney in Orange County, goes to LA or San Diego to maybe meet a client or a, a show a property or network with someone, go to a workshop, she's traveling. She can go to In-N-Out Burger in LA and ride off dinner by herself because she's traveling for business. Awesome. Which will jump over to travel. Is that okay, Jeff? Yes, sir. Dining and travel go hand in hand. Now this is important. Christmas time is here and I want you to have a board meeting. I want you to have your annual board meeting for your LLC or corporation. Because if you have an LLC or corporation, you should have separate checking, a separate debit card, separate credit card. You should have good books. And I know you realtors, you hate doing books and you try to delegate it and that's great, stay on top of it. And you're gonna have a board of advisors for your LLC or a board of directors for your corporation. And just maybe during December, you're gonna get the family around the table and go, let me tell you what my strategic plan is for next year. Anybody have any advice for me? You're all on my board. I need your advice. Please help me out. What do you think? That entire meeting just became a write-off. The travel to get there, the lodging while you're there, and the dining you buy when you're in your meeting. Now, I can't write off 10 days in the Cayman Islands, but I could write off one or two days. Are you attending a workshop? Are you looking at your rentals? Are you networking with other realtors or other buyers or other sellers? Whenever you're traveling, I know you're working. Let's make our travel always a write-off. My wife has said for years, show me you love me. Take me on a trip that's not a write-off. I'm like, no, I can't do it. There's got to be a write-off. <laughs> hey, Mark. So, yes. Um, Bettina Robinson's got a question. Uh, don't you get 100% of the dining deduction when biz is discussed? I believe that's something you already, you already touched on. If you're going to circle back to that for a second. You bet. Dining. Dining is never 100% ever. You write down 100%, but you may not know it, but your accountant's cutting it in half. Okay. Now, where you get 100% for food, notice how I use the word food and not dining, is when you buy food for an open house. All the chips and crackers and wine and cheese, 
100% write-off. You do a workshop and you bring your customers in and you talk about property for listing, listings in your area or you do some training. All the food at your workshop, 100% write-off. You hold a team member company party once or twice a year, special occasion, not family members, legitimate employees, business partners, associates. That party could be 100% write-off, but there's limitations. But whenever you go out to eat and talk business or go out to eat and travel, it's cut in half at the end of the day. Got it. Okay. Um, let's circle back for a second. We've got some questions and I want to get them in real time because heaven forbid realtors are on here and then they go off because they take a phone call or they miss their Adderall for the day. Um, how do you get income into your S corp when your state's real estate commission doesn't allow real estate commissions to be made out to your entity name? <laughs> I love it. Uh, rarely does a real estate commissioner, I'm uh, sorry. I've dealt with real estate boards for 20 years. And nine out of 10 states, almost all the states, will allow an S Corp or an LLC to get paid. But what happens is the brokers aren't set up for it, or you set up your entity in the wrong way. But boards know that realtors and brokers are S Corps. It's just they have requirements of how you're to get paid, and the brokers make it easier by saying, no, I'm just going to pay you. So just don't buy into my state's stupid. They know what's going on. Okay. But here's the way around it all day long, all day long. Do you think people always pay me, Mark Kohler, and write my corporation's name on their check or their payment? No. No. I take it and I transfer the money or deposit it in my S Corp, and it's called nominee income. Your accountant, at the end of the day, at the end of the year, if you got any 1099s to your personal name, they'll put them on a Schedule C. They'll show the money in and they'll show the money out and show that it's going to a corporation of which you own. And then you take your valid W-2 payroll and you just save 15% on all of the draw. That's why you do it. I do this with realtors and brokers and financial advisors. Now, it's funny you bring this up, Jeff. There was a case just two weeks ago that got disseminated amongst my office and all the lawyers. And they're like, oh, nominee income didn't work. It was a financial advisor in like Kentucky or something. And he, he, the, the, the broker dealer wouldn't send the money to his corporation. They were going to send it to the licensed individual, right? That's what we're talking about. So a realtor in Nebraska is saying, well, my broker won't write me the check. I mean, my corporation, the check, they won't 1099 my LLC or corporation. They're going to 1099 me. It's okay. Deposit the money in your S corp. You have to deposit the money in the S corp. Put it, boom, go sign the back of the check, boom, move it over to your S Corp, online banking. Let the money go through there. This is how you launder, I'm sorry, this is how you clean the money. Now, this guy lost his case. The IRS said, no to nominee income. We're gonna subject this to all self-employment tax, even though you had an S Corp. I was like, oh my gosh, we've been doing this for years. And I told the attorney, send me the case, send me the case. I was on a plane in, yeah, I was actually in Orange County on a flight in from uh, Vegas last week, and I was reading the case on the tarmac. Oh, the guy never took a W-2. That was the problem. He nominated the S Corp and tried to pay no self-employment tax at all. And the IRS said, uh-uh, no way. We're pushing it all back to the Schedule C. So it wasn't that nominee income was bad, is that they didn't follow through with the freaking process. So... Being a realtor and you're making great money is one thing. Saving it, protecting it, and investing it is part two. But no one wants to talk about it because it's the boring CPA or lawyer, Mark Kohler. <laughs> Guys, whoever's watching this, I want to say thank you. You should be commended. You are the, the, the church choir. I'm preaching to the choir. You wouldn't be listening if you didn't know, man, I made a lot of money in years past and it just disappeared. Taxes and this and that. Well, now it's time to start saving it and protecting it. That's what I teach. It's the yin and the yang. Making money is yin, saving it is yang. That's where we're at today. Okay, next question. Uh, next one is, would you recommend, uh, this is from Amanda Smith, uh, would you recommend a newer agent, uh, what would you recommend that they do to set up, uh, if they have very little GCI? What, 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 what should they do? Okay, if you're a brand new realtor, 
And let's look at 2020 and 2021. Um, I did this for my daughter in, 19, in 2019 compared to 2020. Let's say you're just getting started in 2020. It's a COVID year. It's been crazy. Some realtors have been killing it. Others are like, what the hell happened? My business dried up. You know, it's been really weird, right? Winners and losers. So any realtors that started in 2020 and you're hanging in there, you're probably going to just file as a Schedule C. You're just going to be a sole proprietor for 2020. Now, I want you to track all your expenses. And I'm going to go through auto and dining and electronic. I'm going to go through a bunch more. But we want to track all of our expenses. You get all those write-offs. You don't have to have an LLC or an S-Corp to get all those write-offs. Let's get them. Let's go get them. That's great. But now, Mark, I'm in December. And what do I do come January 1st? What do I do? Well, I want a get-out-of-jail-free card. I want to get out a self-employment tax-free card. So what I'm going to do is I am going to set up an LLC January 1st. Now, I know that's not going to save me any taxes. But what it allows me to do is I can see how 2021 goes. And if I start killing it and I'm making good money in the summer or in the fall, and we know there's going to be a lot of movement in the real estate market, lots of opportunities for buying and selling. We hope lots of commissions are going to be flying out the door in good ways to pay you. Um, your LLC, I can backdate it into an S-Corp. LLCs have the unique ability to be backdated one year, just the one year into an S-Corp. So some of you that are in 2020 and you've been making money and you're like, Mark, this is me right here. I'm making money right now and I've been in an LLC all year. I never heard about this S-Corp thing. I can backdate you into an S-Corp and knock out your payroll in the next five weeks. That's the goal. We're swamped, as you can imagine. But your goal is to do a backdated S election immediately. But for those that are brand new, you didn't have an LLC. So we want to get that LLC going for 2021 and make sure we can backdate into it. Because I can't backdate this brand new B into an S Corp. They were just a sole prop. There's no way to do that. Yeah. So a newbie, I'd say be an LLC, see how the year goes. Now, for some of you that are like, Mark, I already made 50 grand, 100 grand. I know I'm going to have a great year next year. I'm on a great team. Things are rocking. Then just go set up a freaking ink. Get it done. We charge 450 bucks DIY, same price as LegalZoom, or we have an $800 with an attorney consult on the phone with you, a real attorney, designing your entire structure, answering your questions. 800 bucks. We get it done in the next eight, six, eight weeks, and you're off to the races in 2021. My phone number, if any of you are like, Mark, we want to get things going. You're going to be out a week or so with an appointment, but it's okay. Here it is, 435-586-9366. 435-586-936. This is not an infomercial. I'm just saying where you can go. Be careful just going and doing it online, and no one's telling you what to do. That's why I'd like you to pay the 800 bucks, get the attorney console, a real tax attorney helping you. You're off to the races. Okay, Jeff. All right, next one is... Um... Tina says, I want to change the name of my business, which is an S-Corp. Is that a challenge? Uh, I'm not worried about branding. Uh, no one knows my company name. They know my name. I'm one personal brokerage. Well, it's interesting you say, what's her name? Bettina, B-E-T-T-I-N-A, Tina Robson. Tina, what's interesting about you saying that is, you say, I want to change the name of my corp. And then you said, there's no branding and there's none of this and none of that, and I don't care about this, part of my question would be, why do you want to change the name if you're not going to... Here, here's what I do. I'll, get, I'll still answer your question, but let me just say, with what you said, that's not a common answer I would help you resolve. What I do is, you got a corporation? Don't change the name. Set up a DBA. Just start marketing a DBA. Leave your... I don't care. Now, you may have an ex-husband, an ex-wife, or someone on your your name of your corp, and it's a really dumb name, and it bugs you. No problem. You file articles of amendment with your state. Um, I would do a, an entire cleanup, get a new corporate book, get stock certificates, do the minutes. The girl, at my paralegal at my office that does all that is Susan Cumpy. And what you want to ask her for is a cleanup and a name change. You're looking at around four to 500 bucks with filing fees and everything. 
changed as a triangle in, in um, uh, scientific terms, so I always put triangle for change, but do a cleanup and name change. Call Susan Cumpy, 435-586-9366, and Susan can help you do that. But again, if the name, no one sees it, no one cares but you, why spend that money? Get your minutes done, still do a cleanup maybe, but just do a DBA. I have Mark J. Kohler, Inc. I am literally Mark J. Kohler, Inc., MJK, Inc. I own probably 20 URLs, three DBAs, and then I own part of an LLC here, part of an LLC there, part of an LLC there. See, when you're an agent and you're part of a brokerage, your S Corp owns your share of the brokerage. See, every dental group, every dental group is an LLC and every doctor is an S Corp. Every brokerage is an LLC and every agent is an S Corp. You should have your own S Corp. That's how it works. Okay. Thank you. Should we go through um, our list? You know what? Come up. I, I actually have, I have a couple more questions if that's okay. Yep. Yep. Is that all right? Yeah. Let's I'm all yours. Get them back. Um, Here's our, yeah. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, sir. No, I was just going to say, we'll, we'll summarize the list and people can go do a little research on their own. I'll awesome. mention my Cyber Monday special, whatever, but, but I want Q and A for the people that are here. They deserve it. Go awesome. Ahead. Um, I would like to get Mark's thoughts on the best way to hold real estate. Oh, okay. Good, good. All right. So we go back to the trifecta. The trifecta is your revocable living trust, single or married. We charge 1500 bucks, any state in the country to do a revocable living trust. I know if some of you spent three or five grand, you didn't need to do it. Ours are freaking amazing. Estate planning attorneys are too expensive around the country, in my opinion. But you get your estate plan done, will, trust, all those goodies. That's the foundation. Then you're going to have your sole proprietorship or your LLC if you're brand new. And then you're going to graduate to your S Corp. You're going to do your fix and flips and your commissions up here in your S Corps. Chip and Joanna down in Waco, Texas, do all their fix and flips in an S Corp. But if they buy a rental, we use an LLC. The LLC holds the rental. The LLC gives us asset protection. It's not there to save taxes. It's there for protection. The first place I use LLCs are for rental properties. Then I can use LLCs to convert to an S-Corp. Then I use LLCs for partnerships that are operational. Those are the three main places for LLCs. This is the brokerage. This is your S-Corp. This is your LLC taxed as an S-Corp. And this is your LLC to hold rentals three ways we use LLCs. Now, well, Mark, you set up an, I live in California, but my rental's in Tennessee. Then you set up a freaking Tennessee LLC because if you don't register in Tennessee, you have no asset protection. If you go, well, California is going to tax my $800, even if I have a Tennessee LLC. You're right. And there's games you can play. We have a mail forwarding service and a registered agent service where your address shows up nowhere. And you and I think that that law in California is ridiculous. And I, I'll fight it to the Supreme Court, and people do. And it, people have won different cases on that. California is far too aggressive on taxing LLCs in other states. But that's a constitutional argument for another day. But here's the deal. You set up LLCs where the rentals freaking are. So if I have a Tennessee property, I have a Tennessee LLC. Will you do set up an LLC for every property, Mark? No. In this little quadrant, let me give you four options. So let's zoom in on that. What I love, and I say this humbly, is I'm a lawyer and a CPA. So I can jump tax to legal, tax to legal. A lot of times you're like, what the hell? I got to go call my lawyer because the accountant doesn't want to answer the lawyer questions. And the lawyer doesn't want to answer your accounting questions. Every one of the account lawyers in my office is a tax attorney. When you meet with them, Everything's on the table, baby. Okay, so we have option one. You set up maybe two LLCs and you put three or four properties in each LLC. All right, that's cool. And no, no, no I'm gonna change this. Let's do it this way, I'm sorry. Everybody start over, put your little grid there. I'm gonna set up one LLC and I'm gonna put three or four properties in one LLC. Cheap, it's easy. I can register it in Tennessee and in Arizona, and I could put my Arizona rentals in it and my Tennessee rentals in it. Cool. One checkbook, one LLC. What's the problem? All my eggs are in one basket. This property has a problem. 
they can get at any of my other properties. All my eggs are in one basket. I personally have protection, which is good, but I'm not protecting each rental from the, each other, just me and my home. So, well, Mark, let's set up two LLCs. I'll do one in Texas. I mean, sorry, one in Tennessee and one in Arizona. Okay, now I have a wall between my two rentals over here, two rentals over here. And that, that protection is nice because I've got a barrier between the two and I have the barrier between my personal assets and the tenant. That's option one, that's option two. Option three is, oh, I've heard of series LLCs, Mark, where you can set up a parent series LLC, I'll call it a PS, parent series, and you can have as many sub-series LLCs, SS, sub-series, 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 sub-series. I can have as many sub-series as I want. I could put one rental in this one, one rental in this one, uh, one rental in this one. Okay, cool. Well, Mark, that's great because I get asset protection in each bucket, but I only have the cost of setting up one LLC and one tax return. <laughs> well... There's only 15 states that let you do that. California is not one of them. Neither is Arizona. But in this example, Tennessee is. So what I could do in that quadrant is I could set up a parent series LLC for Tennessee and then just do a regular LLC for Arizona. This one could have babies, as many as I want. This one just holds my rentals. Got it. Okay. Option four. This is the creme de la creme, which means when I have a million dollar type client with 10 rentals in five states or three states, or they're in California, and I did this this week, they have rentals in Idaho and Washington state, and they wanted protection and privacy. So they didn't want their name anywhere. We wanted better protection, not tax savings. This is all protection. We set up a Wyoming LLC, which is called a COPE. Cheaper, faster, simpler, more private than Nevada or Delaware. Mm. Love it. And then this Wyoming LLC owns all of your baby LLCs. So my Arizona LLC could be here, my Tennessee LLC. And so they kind of act like subs, but it's better. I'm getting two-way protection with my COPE charging order protection entity. I'm getting better audit protection. Do you know you get 15 times less chance of an audit? with this structure. I'm actually reducing the chance of an audit and dramatically in decreasing your chance of a lawsuit and dramatically increasing your privacy all with one fell swoop. So that's this structure, structure here. And all of your losses are going to be a write-off against your other income because you are a real estate pro. Anyway, there's that's the answer to that. How many entities are LLCs? In a that's, great. that's great. That's um, great. Another one, Lou Sanderson's asking, uh, what about Prop uh, Prop 19 in California? Um, it's a huge conversation. Um, let me, I even did a little memo on this. Let me, I want to grab a couple thoughts on that. Ask me your next question. We'll come back to Prop 19. Okay. Uh, the other one is, uh, if there's time, could you discuss retirement accounts for self-employed individuals for future reference? Okay, now that's on one of our top 10. And um, so, hey, can, um, guys, can you get me on my internet over here? Because I jumped off the Wi-Fi. Thank you so much. I wanted to just pull up my memo real quick. Um, okay, on our top 10, one of them was setting up your um, retirement account before um as a part of your strategy. Now, here's where this gets good. So we've got our trifecta. I've got my trust. And then, thank you. Okay. Um, here's my S Corp. Now I divide this side. Over here is my, thank you. Here's my LLC for rentals that my trust owns and my trust owns my S corp. So I've got this trifecta and this is my short-term side and this is my investment side, long-term side. Well, the second 
best way to build wealth besides buying your own rentals, which we're going to do both, by the way, is I'm going to start setting up and funding a solo 401k. We, this is our solo 401k month. We've been hammered because we clients and realtors especially love to set up solo 401ks and we fund the solo because we don't have to match for any other employees. And then the 401k opens its own LLC and sets up and buys its own rentals. Now in my family, every one of my kids and myself have a Roth IRA. You can have a Roth IRA no matter how much money you make. It's called the backdoor Roth. Go to YouTube and Google backdoor Roth Kohler and I totally explain it. But our family, everybody has a Roth IRA. We have a health savings account. One of us has a traditional IRA. And so with my kids and me, and I have two kids that are married now, we have an LLC with eight owners. And this LLC goes out and does business and makes money tax deferred or tax free. P Peter Thiel that started PayPal started it with his Roth IRA. He's now got a billion dollar Roth IRA never paying tax ever. So I want you buying rentals in your retirement accounts at the same time you're buying rentals in your own name. Now, do you do a solo 401k? Do you do a SEP? Do you do a simple? Do you do a Roth? Oh my gosh, I have so many different strategies or thoughts on that. I do it kind of like a pyramid. I start out with the traditional and then I go to the Roth and I like to bring in the HSA. And then we're going to worry about possibly a SEP. And then we're going to bring you to the 401k. And then at the very top is our DB plan or the defined benefit pension plan. You can have all these. And I'm going to find out how much you can put away. What are you at on your timeline for 2020? Um, what's your profit look like? And then we're going to choose the best structure for you. Now, I don't, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not going to tell you to go buy stocks, mutual funds, or ETFs. In fact, if anything, I want you to self-direct your retirement accounts and buy what you know, which is real estate. So uh, anyway, anyway, um, all right, next question. Um, could regular Roths for W-2 earners be converted into backdoor Roths? Uh, so regular Roth converted to backdoor Roths? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, but you wouldn't ever do that. So here, let me show you this, everybody. Okay. So here's your, again, we get our trifecta. It's always good to have our picture. So here's our trust. And let's say... I have an old 401k from an old job. I can roll it out to an IRA and then convert it to a Roth. When I convert it to a Roth, I pay the tax, but then at this year's rates, but I don't pay tax on it ever, 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 ever again. That's called a Roth conversion. All right. Now, some of you may already have a Roth you don't need a backdoor Roth because you already have a Roth. A backdoor Roth is a way to get money into a Roth if you make too much money. So let's say you're over here and you're like, Mark, I make more than 100, 200 grand and I'm not allowed to do a Roth. What we do is we put money in a regular IRA and because you make too much money, you don't get a deduction. Well, you don't get a deduction when you put money in a regular Roth anyway. So we're going to just put the money in the IRA and then on day two, convert it to a Roth. That's called the backdoor Roth. I put money in a non-deductible IRA and then convert it to a Roth. Another backdoor Roth method is some of you might form a 401k, put your money in there now, and I can convert it to a Roth anytime, no matter what income level I have. Inside the 401k, you now have part Roth and part regular. That's another form of backdoor Roth. So when you do a consult with one of my tax lawyers, in an hour, we're going to talk about your entity. You can ask any questions about your Roth IRA, your 401k, converting, self-directing. And you might need additional consults down the road or in a setup. I have some clients who are like, Mark, I need an hour with you every three months because I'll just save up my questions. There's so much to do.
you know, something like that. Does, did that sound like I s solved, answered that? It was good. No, it was good because uh, there's a, a lot of moving parts to that, to that question. Um, so that was good. We've got another one is uh, as a new agent, which is better paying taxes quarterly or annually? Uh, oh, I am so glad you people are asking these questions. The reason why I kind of sometimes stutter and I'm grateful you're asking questions. I don't want to make anybody feel dumb. Uh, it's always better to do it annually, but you're not allowed to. And if someone's letting you do that and you get audited, I would sue the person that told you it's okay for them to pay your penalty. So Jeff, why that person might be asking this is they have their S corp. And when you have an S corp, you've got to send in a payroll report every quarter. Yeah. So in a year, I'm going to do first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. And I'm going to do a little bit of payroll each quarter. And I'm going to send in a deposit to the IRS each quarter. That's what you're required to do. It's not that you have a choice. You can't say, oh, well, I don't do that. I just do zeros all year. And then I do a big payroll in the fourth quarter. And I know what your argument is. You're going to say, well, Mark, my income's up and down as a realtor. So I never know what payroll to take. So I'll just do it in fourth quarter. Yeah, sounds good. Doesn't fly. You get audited, you're going to pay penalties on all those quarters because yep. they're going to say, even with your income that was up and down, you could have paid something, damn it. So choose a number. So what we do as our clients is we look at it every quarter. My payroll team, Nanette runs my payroll team. She'll call you up in April because first quarter is January, February, and March. So she's going to, her team would call you in April and go, Jeff, how'd you do first quarter? And you're like, oh my gosh, I killed it. Okay, what did you net? Well, I made probably 30 grand. Okay, well, let's do 10 grand as payroll. You've already taken the money, but we do a payroll report on 10 grand and you send in your freaking FICA, the F word, done. You can't wait till the end of the year to do that. If you do, you're gonna pay penalties and interest on this FICA amount you should have done. Now, if we call you in July and we're asking what your payroll was like in April, May, and June, and we go, hey, Jeff, how'd you do? Oh my gosh, I went snow skiing. I broke my leg, compound fracture. I haven't sold any real estate in three months. Okay, we can show that in the books if we were audited. Okay, zero payroll report. We still file, but we claim a zero. And we can because Jeff didn't make any money. Third quarter, make money. Fourth quarter, make big, big, big money. See, every quarter you adjust your payroll amount until we nail it. But you can't wait till the end of the year to do this. And if some accountant is telling you it's okay, I dare you. Send him an email and go, hey, I was listening to a conference by Mark Kohler. By the way, I teach more CPAs around the country than real estate investors. I have a lot of CPA followers. A lot of people know who I am. So if you tell your CPA, and I say that humbly, but if you tell your CPA, yeah, I was listening to a conference by Mark Kohler. And he said, I can't do payroll once a year. And they said, oh, yes, you can. Say, okay. Will you put in an email to me that if I get audited and there's any penalties, you'll pay them? Well, I'm not going to sign that. Then why are you saying it's okay? Yeah. You can't, you can't say it's okay if you won't stand behind it. Makes me mad. I love it. Damn it. I love it. All right. Last, last question, my friend. Last one. Um, uh, this is from Michelle. Uh, so can you take your SEP money now and purchase real estate? Yes, I do it all day long. You want to go to directedira.com. Everybody, if you have an old SEP, an old IRA, an old 401k, Matt Sorensen and my partner and I have also, look, here's a self-directed IRA handbook, the best selling book in the country on self-directing your SEP, 401k or IRA. Go to www.directedira.com. And we've got videos there and all sorts of support material. And also you can get the book and there's videos and support material at www.sdirahandbook.com. Um, now the last thing I'll throw out or, and, and I'll do whatever, Prop 19. Now here's the thing, Prop 19 was amended this year so that inherited people are trying to get less screwed over by Prop 19. And Prop 19 is there to help resolve the problem of um, 
and they give tax breaks to homeowners that are inheriting property. Right. That that's the new change there. Um, because they want to maintain their the relatives' low tax basis on the property taxes. Um, the other thing is when you transfer property from a your name into an LLC or from your home into your trust, there's a cover sheet that allows you to be exempt from transfer taxes and a lot of times exempt from any sort of readjustment of the property taxes because it's a transfer to your own trust. It's a transfer to your own LLC. Now, I don't wanna say it's all okay, go do it tomorrow. You wanna look at your particular state. There's lab code agents all over the country. Washington State, Florida, Texas. There's all sorts of states that don't have a state tax, but they're really hard on property tax. California, Prop 19, you got Nevada issues on transferring property to your own LLC or trust. There's ways around it. Um, you can talk to my office. Um, Brady uh, is our director of deed transfers, and he helps clients transfer their properties into their new trusts or their new LLCs. And we have a very affordable rate. You can go to your title company. And if you want to go to your title company and just say, hey, I got a rental property. It's in my own name. I'm exposed. I want to get it in an LLC. Can I get around having the property readjusted for property tax? In most states, in most counties, there's a way around that. Um, and you're looking at about 3,600 counties around the country uh, out of the 50 states. It's kind of crazy. So um, anyway, look at that. Uh, Prop 19 is a tricky one. There's lectures on CE and attorneys. We go to classes and Prop 19 is a whole class in and of itself. So I don't want you to sound like I'm trying to dodge the question from a lack of knowledge. Um, I have to dive deep into it every time because it's, it's really hairy. There's not a lot of money in it per se it, for attorneys to get into it unless they're appealing one of your um, assessments and they've increased your property taxes Im immensely. But um, it's a great question and you want to look into it before you just transfer property willy nilly. Got it. All right, my okay. friend, we got, we, got, we got one more question and then, then, then that's it. We'll wrap up and, and we'll hit the rest of those really fast. Um, okay. Eric Babcock wants, so this is a good question. Um, in regards to your vehicle, is leasing or financing the best route? Uh, why is one better than the other? Okay, Corey, can you pull up the auto blog article of mine from January? You know where it's at. You've done it before and put it in the chat. Thank you, bud. Corey, my director, is so good. He's the responsible for building out the studio and everything he does. Awesome. If you ever want to pay him people to come to you and video an event for you, he's got a very affordable rate. I'm pipping you out. You notice that? That's hey. good, right? Okay, so you just email me and go, Mark, I need Corey. Have him come shoot a vet for me. Um, he's cheaper than California rates, nine times out of 10, even, even with flying him in. <coughs> okay. The auto deduction, which is one all of you should be taking advantage of, it's a big one for realtors, is broken into two categories. It's broken into mileage or actual. Actual is broken into buying or leasing. For 30 years, mileage has been generally the best way to go because the depreciation limits on cars were terrible. And the only thing you could really write off was a big SUV or truck. Most of you know that, right? Well, in 2018, that all got turned on its head with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Donald Trump threw out there with the GOP Let's get a bigger write-off for autos. So you can write off a car so much faster than you used to, new or used, with a loan or without a loan. You can also buy a truck or SUV now and write off 100% of it if it's a business use vehicle and whatever percentage is business use. So if you have a $50,000 car, I mean $50,000 SUV, I can write off 40,000 of it right now in December. And even if you put $1 down and finance the whole thing, it's insane. So they threw gas on the fire with you new or used, loan or no loan. You don't have to wrap your vehicle with text. And I have an article on this that Corey just put down in the chat. And it's a blog article on seven to eight. I think I have seven or eight options and which one is best 
depending on the use of your car, how many miles you're going to burn, how much did you spend, and it's some kind of general rules of thumb. Check that out. For realtors, I rarely recommend leasing. Not good usually because of the mileage limits. I know you realtors, you're going to put on a ton of miles. Leasing sucks for that. But if you're going to put on a ton of miles and buy a low-cost car, I'll probably go mileage. If you're not going to have a lot of miles, but buy a higher price car, I'm going to go actual buying. Lots of options. Read that article, get a consult with your accountant. But that's one of the top 10 is making sure your auto is a deduction. A good summary point of these is like, if I'm going to go to the airport for Christmas, listen, I'm going to go somewhere for Christmas and I'm going to fly, even though COVID says I shouldn't, but I'm going to fly. I'm going to take an auto deduction on the way to the airport. I'm going to take a travel deduction for the parking, any uh, uh, airfare on the way. If I go buy some food in the airport, I'm going to write off dining. When I get to where I'm going, I'm going to tell the family I want to have a board of directors, board of advisors training meeting and get their advice for my business the upcoming year. And if I have any kids there under age 18 or over age 18 that need money, I'm going to 1099 them or pay them out of my business. So now I'm getting a write-off for paying family, board of advisors, directors meeting, travel, auto, and dining all in the same trip. That's how we take advantage of this stuff. A penny saved is a penny earned. That was Benjamin Franklin. And realtors, and don't be offended by this, Jeff, or anybody out there, realtors don't get that for a few years when they're new. It's all about making money. Yeah. Pretty soon, right, Jeff? You get to a point yeah. where you're like, I got to save. So anyway, healthcare, health savings accounts, HRAs. I've got articles and blogs on that. HRA, health reimbursement arrangements and flexible spending accounts, you've got to do right now before December 31st. If you're going to pay family members, you've got to do it right now before December 31st. If you're going to do a Roth conversion, you have to do it now before December 31st. If you're going to do a 401k, a solo, it has to be set up before January 1st. If I'm going to buy right off electronic supplies or go buy a new iPad or iPhone, you have to do it before December 31st. You can put it on your credit card, but still take a write-off and then pay off the card in January. Do it all with points. Points, when you redeem them, are tax-free, even though you got the write-off. IRS has been trying to go after that for years. So I use my business card for business expenses, pay it off immediately, get the points, and I redeem points for personal travel. Great. And drop. Okay. Ooh. Home office. Never let anybody scare you out of the home office. The home office is freaking alive and well. Watch the movie Accountant with Ben Affleck. In the first scene, he gives the exact procedure for home office with the right, correct amounts too. It's really kind of fun. They, the That's writers awesome. did a good job there. Okay. There we go, Jeff. That's it, brother. Woo. That was a lot. We, we covered a lot. Um, I, I, we were, and I was keeping up, but we've, uh, there's a lot of links uh, in chat um what is the best way mark for people to as you're doing it right now my friend thank you very much and i'll be putting that in chat as well and at markjkohler.com okay let me damn it Corey, do we have a link to the cyber monday special posted it we've already posted it for you oh you did okay good Done. Done. Uh, because okay. it's not anywhere else people i don't even have a link for it at okay so here's the deal if you went to my website and bought my eight steps workbook online, it's on Amazon for 99 bucks. And then my tax and legal library is $399. It's over four or $500 for the, all the bells and whistles I throw in. For Cyber Monday, I give it all to you digitally for $99. I've already sold a bunch over Cyber Monday weekend, but the, the site is only up until midnight tonight. I know that sounds like I'm a used car salesman or something, but I'm sorry, it's got to get cut off at some point. And my team said, are you going to talk about it today on the Lab Coats webinar? I said, I will. So today at midnight, that Cyber Monday special is over. And I have half hour to 45 minute videos on every topic that we just caught, covered, talked about. Awesome. And you could go watch it. It's lifetime access. I've been doing it for 10 years. I shoot new videos every year. You never have to pay again. It is a killer deal. I have clients wait all year long to just do the Cyber Monday special because they want to save some money. So get over there. Um, but for midnight tonight, if you want to do Cyber Monday.
That's it, Perfect. Jeff. All right, my friend. Awesome as always. Thank you so much for your time, for your intellect. You've got one of the biggest brains ever when it comes to this stuff. And uh, I know that uh, on behalf of the LabCo and Agents community, we're very uh, honored and uh, humble that you spent some time with us. Thank you so oh, much. Thank sir. you. It's my honor. Thanks for having me. Well, take care. Take care.